Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. I just want to tell you a few things that I found very interesting that I found out recently. Um, there is a problem with the way that EVs are being adopted in the US and the problem is is that the people buying the EVs are the people that drive the least. So you're getting the least benefit in terms of air quality, uh, climate change, carbon emissions, um, and uh, the benefits of the EVs by having them being purchased by the people who drive them the least. Because the problem with EVs is there's a lot of embedded energy in the manufacture of the EV. And the EV only gets better the more you use it. So if you buy a gas vehicle and then you buy an EV and you don't drive either vehicle, the EV has caused more environmental damage. Um, right when you buy it. But as you drive the vehicle, the combustion vehicle uh, causes more environmental damage and the EV causes less environmental damage. So you mo the more you drive it, the more that separation occurs. But currently, um, this was a study published in October 2023 in Juul. They found out that the average EV drives about 7,000 miles a year in the U.S., and the average combustion vehicle they found drives about 12,000 miles. So almost almost half. And that seems to be a major problem. And then there was another fascinating report by this um, think tank group. And they have a short video about it. And then we'll talk about the kind of the highlights of the report. And I found that pretty fascinating. In the race to curb climate change, one culprit stands out responsible for one-sixth of U.S. climate pollution, gasoline. It's a ticking time bomb, threatening the very planet we call home. But there's hope on the horizon, and it starts with the people most dependent on gasoline, gasoline super users. Meet Pedro, a gasoline super user burning more than 100 gallons of gas a week. Pretty much about 60, 70% of my day is spent driving either to or from a job site. It, it gets really expensive. Pedro represents drivers in the top 10% for gasoline use. The average super user shells out more than $530 monthly on gasoline, a staggering 10% of their income. Now, picture this, electric vehicles as the game changer. Pedro and others like him could save big $360 a month in fuel costs alone plus hundreds more on maintenance. In fact, these savings could cover the monthly payment for a shiny new EV, trading a pricey polluter for a cleaner future. But it's not just about personal savings. A super user burns five times as much gas as other drivers. Switching super users to EVs first could slash our reliance on gasoline, requiring fewer EVs to cut emissions in half. Super users are everyday people, but circumstances force them to clock in extra miles, often residing in rural areas and favoring larger, less fuel-efficient vehicles. New data can pinpoint these super users, guiding our efforts to accelerate change. To jumpstart this transition, we propose special incentives for super users, easing the burden of EV down payments. Education is key, helping them get familiar with EVs and grasp the immense savings. Converting super users to EVs slashes pollution, reduces gasoline dependence, and alleviates the financial strain on gasoline burdened families. The road to a sustainable future starts with Pedro and others like him, steering towards a cleaner, greener tomorrow. Okay. So that was very, okay, I, um, I downloaded the actual report and let's go through some of the highlights of it because it's very, very interesting, I, I thought. And I didn't realize that the um, scale of this was uh, this big. So what happens is, is that the U.S. burns 370 million gallons of gasoline every day. Uh, that's three times more than China and far more than any country. There's a little graph below we'll go over. So gasoline causes one-sixth of U.S. carbon emissions and costs... Uh, we spend, um, as a country, about $450 billion a year paying for gasoline. Um, but there's the top 10% of users that this report is calling gasoline super users. 
they use a third of all the gasoline in the United States. So 10% 10 of the drivers use a third of all the gasoline. And these 21 million US gasoline super users, they make up just 0.24% of the world's population, but they use almost 11% of the world's gasoline, nearly as much as China. So here, here's the graph. This yellow and red is what the US uses in gasoline. So you can see that the US alone uses about a third of the entire world's gasoline. And if you parse out the bottom 90% versus the top 10% of users, the top 10% of users uses more gasoline than the U European Union, Brazil, and Russia combined almost. And you can see that they use almost as much gasoline as China, the entire country of China, which has like a billion people, um, well over a billion people. Um, so that's, and so these are the people that would most benefit the environment if you had them convert over to EVs because they are gonna use the EVs a lot and put a lot of miles on them. And the, these people, okay, we'll get, we'll get, let's get into the demographics of who these people are. Um, because, I mean, these people aren't like bad or anything. It's just they're where they live and the jobs they have just require them to drive a lot. And it says here, so annually super users, they drive an average. So these people are driving an average of 40,000 miles a year. And they use about uh, almost 2,000 gallons of gasoline. And most of these people live in rural areas or small towns, which makes sense because that's why they're having to drive a lot because in rural areas, things are spread out. And the rest of the super users live in suburbs and mid-sized cities. Um, in rural areas, about 20% of the drivers are super users, whereas in big cities, smaller percentage are. And that also makes sense. Um, then this talks about some of the racial distribution. And then it says... Super users drive on average about 116 miles a day. So they're averaging 100 miles, you know, over the weekdays and the weekends, a little over 100 miles a day. And most of these people are not wealthy people. They have household incomes of less than 100,000. So transitioning to electric vehicles, which usually have high upfront costs, is difficult for them. And if you look at this, this is what's the kind of important thing. 81% um, of these super users, so most people in rural areas live in homes. They don't live in apartments or anything. So they can have home charging. Now they say there's little barriers to installing level two charging. Level two charging is not, um, if you have a 220 plug in your garage or someplace, it's not too hard to buy like a $200 um, level two charger EVSE and install it. That's not that bad. But um, if you're if you're not very wealthy, even that may be a barrier. And if you don't have a 220 plug, then that's a barrier too. But these are the people that would be perfect for the Aptera because not only is the Aptera uh, an EV, it's the most efficient EV. And so they would save so much money. So these people are spending on average uh, $530 a month just on gasoline. That's a lot. For, for people that are not making a lot of money, $530 a month is a lot of money. And if you could reduce that fuel cost from $530 a month to say $50 a month in electric costs, which is what would ha probably happen with the Aptera, that's a savings for them of close to $500. Um, they're saying that they could save up to you know, $340 if they switch to a normal EV. And these people, you could charge the Aptera with a regular 110 plug overnight. Um, for what they're doing because they're driving an average of 100 miles a day and that's the amount of range that you could easily replete in an Aptera overnight in the garage, not to mention the solar charging that they would get during the day. Um, so this is something that a lot of states are recognizing now and they're realizing that incentivizing EVs to be purchased by people that end up not driving them very much isn't that helpful. And what they're trying to do is incentivize these people that drive a lot because they have long commutes or they're like uh, Pedro in the video, they're handyman and they have to drive around from job site to job site to job site 
and they're just driving like more than half the day, um, incentivizing them to switch to a more efficient vehicle is going to help overall a lot more. So having like one Pedro um, switch over to an EV is going to be much more useful than having like 20 EVs purchased by people that don't drive them very much. Um, so they have, they are doing these, um, a bunch of states, uh, recently lawmakers in California, Maryland, Vermont, and Washington have proposed policies to try to encourage these high mileage, uh, users to use electric vehicles. So here's a report from the Washington state joint transportation committee. Um, I think what Aptera should do is get their, um, government relations committee to target, um, states that are looking into this and ha have them look at Aptera and say, look, here is the perfect vehicle. It's going to save people the most money, personally. It's going to save the environment the most uh, uh, damage from use of transportation. And it's a relatively in a, uh, cheap vehicle. So you should incentivize people to buy Apteras or highly efficient vehicles like the Aptera uh, for these people that, um, that use a lot of gasoline. So uh, this was actually, when I saw this report, I was, I was, kind of shocked at the scale. This graph is very telling. 10% 10, 10 of US drivers use one third of all the gasoline in the United States and use as much gasoline, far more gasoline, the entire European Union combined. And almost as much as uh, China of a, a country that has over a billion people. And um, they use a third of the gasoline. And I guess I, I've, I've, I must have seen this statistic before, but it is shocking just to see it, that we burn almost 400 million gallons of gasoline per day, every day. That is a shocking amount of, uh, of gasoline. That's crazy. Um, I don't know if you guys knew that, but to me, it seems like a very, very large number. But anyway, I think that's what Aptera should do. And I think um, uh, so this is something that the ambassador team will probably look into is incentivizing. Now that states are looking at policies to incentivize these high mileage drivers to switch over to EVs, the perfect EV to switch them over to would be an Aptera. Aptera just needs to produce a few soon so that they're available for these uh, incentives. All right, well, let me know what you guys think. Um, Tell me your thoughts in your comments below. I love reading all your comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.